So again, to go back to the question, if that is the only document, that is the only evidence that the complainant uh, is presenting or relying on to prove the employer and employer relationship between the parties, that is not sufficient. It cannot be the basis for an employer employer relationship. A. So is a certificate of employment or COE sufficient to prove uh, the employer 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 and employer relationship uh, between the parties? This is not actually a novel question. There have been many, many labor cases wherein the complainant alleging or claiming to be an employee of the company uh, has relied simply or solely or exclusively on a certificate of employment that um, was obtained or received from the company. Okay, um, let's be clear. There are cases wherein the relationship between the parties are not clear because uh, sometimes the parties actually entered into a freelancer or independent contractor agreement. In that situation, the individual is not an employee, but a talent or an individual with a specialized skill set. Uh, and that he or she was hired uh, for a specific reason and with the intention that the there would be no employer-employee relationship between the parties. Now, a lot of people do not easily understand that relationship. Okay, the independent contractor uh, relationship. Um, to make it very simple, uh, for instance, uh, let's say in your home, you need to uh, fix an electrical wiring. When you engage an electrician, you are not, you do not intend to make the electrician your employee. You are relying on the electrician because of his expertise, knowledge, and skills on fixing electrical problems. So that electrician is an independent contractor, a freelancer, an individual who um, offers his or her services for compensation. So that is the same case with other companies when they engage individuals as independent contractors. They are being engaged as a freelancer, as a talent, or someone with a skill set. Okay, so um, that's why... Uh, in some cases, the these individuals don't understand that arrangement. So um, some of those cases, particularly if the individual asks for COE, and then sometimes the employer or the HR is not that knowledgeable with respect to, uh, how to say this, whether the what would be the proper document to issue to an independent contractor or freelancer. So they often just issue a COE. So again, to go back to the question, if that is the only document, that is the only evidence that the complainant uh, is presenting or relying on to prove the employer and employer relationship between the parties, that is not sufficient. It cannot be the basis for an employer and employer relationship. Remember, you have to recall that there is what we call the fourfold test to prove, to check whether there is an employer and employer, and employer relationship between the parties. And the fourfold test you have number one, the power of selection and hiring. Um, is it the supposed employer that selected and hired the uh, supposed employee? Number two, you have the um, wages and compensation. Is it the supposed or alleged company that is the one paying the salary or wages of the alleged employee? That fact alone could already be uh, a big problem on the part the complainant because usually uh, independent contractors or freelancers are not paid salaries or uh, wages but fees, professional fees. The number three, you have um, the power, uh, how to say this, to discipline. Uh, sorry, the power to control, control, not discipline, control. Okay. The, the power of control is very important. Can the uh, supposed or alleged employer dictate to the individual on how to do work because oftentimes in independent contract arrangement again that person is has the unique 
or has a advanced skill set, background, knowledge, competence, certification, license, etc. That's why he or she is being engaged as an independent contractor. So the employer would not uh, cannot substitute judgment or how to do work or cannot tell that individual. It's different for an employee because the company and the employer can order, instruct, direct the individual what to do. To go back to our electrician example, uh, most people do not know anything about electricity, so they cannot tell the patient what to do, how to do the work. And final number four, you have the power of dismissal. Can the alleged employer dismiss, let go, separate the alleged employee? Most of the time, you cannot do that because, again, there is no employment relationship. You cannot let go an employee for just cost or authorized causes. It's just not applicable in an uh, independent contractor or freelancer arrangement. If you are not satisfied with the services of a freelancer or independent contractor, what happens is that there is a um, there can be a breach of contract or a rescission or a termination of the engagement, betting on the terms of the contract. So there.